Let's talk about comparing decimals. So say we have 26 and 28 hundredths and 26 and 208 thousandths. How do I know which one's bigger? Does anybody have any methods? Closer to the decimal? What do you mean by that? Like, like 28 would be instead of 208. So you're saying this is bigger than that? I think that would be. Okay. Go ahead. Anything moved over closest to the decimal point moving left would be the higher number. You both kind of said the same thing, and I'm not really getting it. Can you explain that? It's like it's, it's two after the, the, the decimal. Okay. So that's what, instead of three. Less but they're numbers. both two. Okay, then your next number no. is uh -huh. going to be the, the deciding factor. Good, okay. So it's always going to be close to the decimal as a higher number. I see, okay, I see what you're saying. So the way the book explains it, um, it's just start looking digit by digit. Start on the left and look digit by digit, compare them. So if you compare the first digit, they're both two. If you compare the second digit, they're both six. Third digit, they're both two. Doesn't matter, that's the decimal point. Right here is where you have a difference between eight and zero. As soon as you have a difference between the digits that correspond, the bigger digit takes that it takes the highest number. So this digit's bigger, so it's gonna be greater than. I think that's kind of what you guys were saying in essence. Um, I just never heard it like that, so that's a good way to say it. So I'm not writing it, but you should be able to write down in your notes that going from left to right, compare digit by digit, as soon as you have a bigger digit, that's your bigger number. Okay, well here's another question. Um, let's look at the same problem, 26 and 28 hundredths and 26 and 208 thousandths. This one only has three decimal places and this one has two decimal places, does that matter? What is the third decimal place here? Zero. Right. And that brings me to another point, is that I can add as many zeros to the end of a decimal as I want, and it won't change its value. Let me write that out. So adding zeros to the end of a decimal does not change its value. So I can write 26.280 and compare that to 26.280000 and they're going to mean the same thing. No matter how many zeros I add to the end of the decimal, it's not going to change its value. So let's try to compare another one. Let's say we have negative 0.12. Notice that they're negative here. And negative 0 0.026. Which one is bigger? Why the right one? Okay. So let's look at a number line. So here's negative, or here's zero, here's negative one. Somewhere between zero and negative one, these two numbers are going to be at. Negative 0 0.026. I'm going to call this negative 0 0.1. Here would be negative 0 0.12, right there. Negative 0 0.026 would be before the negative 0 0.1. And remember that the closer to the right that the number is, the bigger it is. So the, this way we increase. So negative 0 0.026 then is bigger than negative 0 0.12. And if you want to talk about the method of comparing digit by digit, well, I'm just going to compare these two. They're both 0. Then here, 1 is 1 and 1 is 0. 1 is bigger than 0. Um, but I'm talking about negative numbers, so that gets reversed. One is actually smaller than zero, and negative numbers. Okay, and let's also talk about rounding decimals. So say you are asked to round a decimal. Say you're asked to round negative 0.032. You have to be told what place they want to round it to. So let's say they want to round that decimal to the hundredth place. So round 
to the nearest hundreds. Whenever you're asked to round to a certain place, you need to have at least one more place after that to round. So the hundreds place is the three. So we're going to call that our round digit. The place next to it is a two. We're going to call it the test digit. So same way that we round whole numbers, we're going to look at the round digit on the test digit. The test digit is less than five, so we're going to round down. So when I round this, it's negative 0 0.03, and that's it. What if we had negative 0 0.035? What would that round to, to the nearest hundred? Yeah. So it's the same thing as whole numbers, huh? It's actually rounding, so we're moving left, so we're rounding down, but I don't want to confuse anyone. So When I say round up, I, technically I mean round down in this case, you're right. Because I'm moving further to the left. Questions about rounding? Can I do another rounding example? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize that you were talking. Um, let's say we have... Keep talking about negative. Instead, so we have negative two point five nine six, and you're asked around to the nearest hundred. So this one's a little tricky. So that's why I chose it. So you're asked around to the nearest hundred. So what's your hundredth place? The nine. So that's my round digit. Um, I'm gonna test with the six. So that's my test digit. So yeah, six is bigger than five, so it's gonna round up. So this nine is gonna become a ten which means this 5 is going to become a 6. So when I round this, it's negative 2.60. Because that 9 went up, and so I had to round it. More questions about this section? Would it have a zero after the 6? No, it doesn't. Um, the reason I did put a zero here is because they asked us to round the nearest hundredth, so I wanted to make sure that we understood that we still had a hundredth place on there. It's just zero. But they're equivalent, whether you put negative 2.6 or negative 2.60. Good question.